weer gewoon uh, normaal college kunnen geven. Tot volgende week. Uh, iedereen is er weer. Everyone is in. Ik heb een signal dat je er bent. Ja, goed. Ja, Go okay. ahead. Thanks. Yes. Goed. Present ik. Oké. Ja, all there. Goed. Oké, dan ik resume my lecture 1146. Uh, I ended before the break uh, the cadastral concept. Um, and this effect is a technical approach, I would say, to, to the whole idea of that administration. Again, here, uh, what, what I put emphasis on in the first, uh, in the first lecture is that there is some confusion between the concepts and the terminology and the cadastral concept. Uh, focuses further on very on, on the traditional idea of cadaster as you know, a map plus information about uh, the rights, resources, responsibilities. But in fact, I think it addresses what we call now land administration. Um, but it's seen from <clears throat> both uh, the engineering aspects and uh, the, the database. Uh, in the past, on paper, now on uh, in the digital uh, collection and uh, in computer, and on the other hand, what you could also say that is the uh, legal technical aspects and uh, the, the, the deeds where the lawyers put um, describe the, the 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 transactions and uh, you transfer the ownership or you rent someone a lease to the land. It's a very technical approach. Um, But there is also another approach that's looking more at the uh, how it works, what, what it's supposed to do. And what we see is that those basic concepts were, that were so important in the time of Napoleon to have information about the land ownership, to have the information about the land use, and also about the value of the land, uh, with the whole aim of, on the one hand, taxation, get money from the citizens that you can invest as Uh, administration as government, and on the other hand, to support uh, the economic growth by, by land transactions, but also to support the use, that you return, see again that in a uh, yeah, modern approach to land administration. So, in fact, nothing's changed really. Uh, of course, the systems become better, um, uh, improved. But the main concepts are still the same. And that is what, uh, what we see here is, is uh, yeah, the, the triangle. And all comes together in the whole concept of land administration. Yeah. So you want the information uh, why to, to support um, it. And that's even better reflected when we look at Uh, the way uh, Stig Annemark uh, looks at it, and it's the same triangle, but uh, more elaborated. Uh, again, here, yeah, the confusion. Eh? He's talking, talking about land management uh, paradigm. Uh, what he doesn't put land administration as such uh, in the middle, but he puts cadastral systems. But in fact, it is referring to the same, an information system about land tenure. Now, why, um, why do we want uh, that information uh, about, uh, now we start with uh, the most uh, easy, I think, about land value, uh, or, yeah, of, uh, taxation, uh, that's the, 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 the whole idea of, of uh, the government uh, getting the money, uh, uh, need to have a system that um, uh, is fair, is reasonable, that people will trust. Uh, how? Because the value is based on uh, objective uh, criteria, but it is also, you can check it in the whole system of letter administration. So it is also about building trust in it. Uh, We have not a government who makes decisions at random. I uh, sent a bill to, to my neighbor, and that's uh, uh, he's paying uh, half of the money I have to pay. Now we can check it eh, as a citizen. Um, 
That's one thing. The other is uh, support of the land use. Uh, um, we have countries that are uh, having more control land use than the other. Uh, nice examples again, the difference between the Netherlands and Belgium. If you go to Belgium, you see, uh, uh, yeah, for us, uh, for me as being Dutch, it's a bit astonishing what, what's happened there in, in, uh, in Belgium. Um, it looks like uh, there is no good land use planning. They have land use planning, but they address it in a different way. While in the Netherlands, I think we are very used to, uh, yeah, you could say, it's very controlled. And the government is making the decisions where is what being built. And to um, uh, support that, also you need a lot of information. You need uh, up-to-date information. And what, what, what is actual land use, uh, what, 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 is, uh, what is the kind of land, uh, how deep is it, uh, situation of nature. Um, now you can think about all the information you want. And in fact, uh, the, the best system of land administration should include all that information. So that goes far more further than, than rights, restrictions and responsibilities. Um, you want uh, as much as information you want about uh, the land itself to have a proper land use planning. So, of course, it is also important to know who is the owner. Uh, so you can address uh, the owners also to have an idea of uh, what, what is the uh, art companies, is industrial use. Um, and you use that information to, to, to plan the future use. So land use planning is also a part of, of uh, the system of land administration supports it. Now we will look uh, after the next two lectures in the next two weeks. We will look more at that land use planning aspect because at the moment uh, I said that in uh, my uh, lecture uh, uh, last week. Uh, in fact, what we see is that on the on the one hand the registration of rights rights uh, uh, restrictions and responsibilities is one silo traditional while on the other hand the land use planning itself the information system about that is another silo but we recognize that that it should be go uh, hand in hand so in fact we should try to strive to get one integrated system we will have uh, a closer look at uh, that uh, also based on research that has been done recently uh, at Delft University uh, in uh, three weeks. Now, and then we uh, get uh, the, uh, the field of land tenure, uh, who is holding what uh, rights uh, in, in land, what interests in land. Now, again, uh, last week, that uh, idea of De Soto, for instance, uh, that you uh, support uh, the economy, uh, the sound system, where people uh, are able to make a living by doing investments um, that, that has to be supported, must be supported by a good system, reliable system, and up-to-date system of land administration, security of tenure, investments, uh, efficient land markets, uh, maybe also based on uh, the information about the land value and that you can I have an idea of what, what is the value of the land. You're not ignorant, but you have objective information about that land. So you know what you can invest and uh, what you want to invest. If you want to buy the land or uh, yeah, uh, get a uh, use right in it. So support of economic growth and uh, yeah, in the larger scale, it also creates a st st stable uh, society. Now, the, that's uh, Stick and the Mark is uh, well, writing about that. It's part of uh, the reading material. Um, yeah, there's another uh, uh, perspective on, on uh, the same issues. Um, 
what we see here is, is uh, by, by Williamson, also someone writing a lot about land administration. What he says is that there is a uh, development from an original fiscal cadaster, so only one task, uh, supporting that, uh, the taxation, to a so-called multipurpose cadaster. So, uh, yeah, supporting several roles, so for instance, also the land use planning. Uh, I think he's uh, correct in this describing uh, several uh, main phases in uh, the relation between uh, land and, and uh, humans. So, yeah, originally it is about uh, yeah, uh, land is reflecting wealth. Yeah? It's the time of uh, big owners, uh, the gentry. Then we see that the citizen comes uh, it's more central, it's also uh, the time uh, after the French Revolution. Uh, again, uh, we see the land transfer, and that is correct. If we have a look at that uh, idea of Napoleon, uh, it's not only about taxation, but it's also to support uh, the land market, so that the citizen who is owning uh, a piece of land can transfer it or borrow uh, money based on, on his ownership, uh, so the support of the market. Next, we get after the Second World War that, that land use planning becomes more and more important. Uh, it's not uh, the right of the individual itself. Uh, you can make decisions what he's going to do with the land. Uh, the, the owner is not uh, no longer central. Uh, as a society, we should take care uh, the, 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 the bigger, uh, yeah. how do we want to see our land, uh, our country, our society? So land use planning becomes more important. And it all comes together in a modern, uh, as he called, multipurpose cadaster. Uh, finally, um, <clears throat> We take a look at uh, the directions uh, the, uh, we take in the Netherlands, where um, we introduced uh, in the past 10 years a whole system of key uh, registers. They can also be called uh, key registrations. In the Dutch, it is uh, called uh, basisregistraties. Um, what is this about? Um, that is about, uh, uh, again, uh, this. Well, an expression we use, uh, authentic gegevens, authentic data. Um, uh, the government wants uh, data sets uh, with, with high quality. And that is about, you could say, about anything in the Netherlands, what was uh, the, between the relation between the government and, and the citizens. And with citizens are also uh, not uh, only the, the, the individual persons, uh, you and me, but also the companies. So all the information that's gathered by the government should be brought uh, in one coherent system that also uh, connects those uh, data together. So it is far more broader than a than, uh, than, uh, cadaster public registers, the land administration, but also uh, topographical maps. Um, it's also about addresses. And what we consider it uh, very natural to be that uh, your house has a street name and a house number. But of course, that should be registered somewhere. So there is no doubt that I'm living uh, at house number 18 and not on uh, uh, house number 19 or the 18A or something like that. Um, so there should be a clear registration. What building has a, what address? Also information about the buildings itself, uh, yeah, uh, about the individual uh, person itself. Now uh, we can go to the government and ask uh, what is my uh, date of birth? Um, what is my name? Uh, what do I earn? That's also uh, in the system. Information about the companies itself, uh, the trade registers, and uh, handelsregister in Dutch. Uh, also about cars, um, also about subsurface. Uh, however, that's not about uh, cables and pipes or tunneling, uh, but it's about uh, 
the technical information about uh, the show itself. And finally, also the cadastral information is part of those uh, key registers. Um, to be included in the whole system, it should be a high quality data set. We strive to, to uh, get uh, reliable uh, information. What's important is that uh, we don't accept anymore that several uh, uh, departments of, of government, uh, for instance, local government, and on the other hand, the, 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 the provinces or, or on, the, on the national level, are having their own systems about uh, um, addresses. There should be only one registration. This, should be used by all the government bodies. So no discussion anymore. There is some part of the government is responsible for a certain data set. For us, of course, this is only addressing uh, the, 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 the government itself. We have to use that key register. And we cannot have another duplicate registration with, with risk that uh, we have uh, two sources of information that are not the same. But for us as a citizen, the good thing is that I, at the moment, I am registered and I have a certain uh, uh, day of birth in uh, what we call the, 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 the basis registratie personen, so the key registers of persons. There is no need to prove that I'm born on that day. So the government cannot ask me, yeah, prove it, because we don't believe that our key register is. Uh, is correct. It's not allowed. So they should use that information. Of course, there can be still mistakes. Uh, no uh, source of information uh, can be perfect. Huh? There can always be made mistakes. But at the moment, a mistake is discovered. That can be by an, uh, by the government itself or by someone who is going to use that information, then it should be reported to the holder of the key registered, investigated, and if indeed there is a mistake, then it should be corrected. Um, I think that the Netherlands is, is one of the countries that uh, is uh, the most sophisticated in this, and uh, but, uh, the whole uh, uh, cadastral information, um, and now I've borrowed a uh, presentation by the Dutch cadaster for this picture, um, is part of this whole system. So here you see, uh, here you see an uh, overview uh, when we're talking about uh, a piece of land, you see there is a connection with the building and uh, the, the register about the key registers on the building, so what's built on it. Now we can, you can also see it in the, the topographical map. It's also part of the key registrations. Uh, of course, there is the information held by the cluster itself about uh, yeah, the parcels and the rights on it. Uh, there's also the property value, and that's for taxation, and the Wolfswaarde, uh, where dealing on who and the zaak is, or uh, value that is done, uh, uh, the value decided to, for taxation uh, by, by the municipalities. Now, it has a certain address. And uh, yeah, who is living on that address? Uh, or is there a uh, company uh, registered on that address? Um, this illustrates uh, the, 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 so the whole network, you could say, uh, the interrelation uh, between the key registers. And this just, I uh, find this a uh, very nice example how it works. Uh, one picture, and it's about the location. Uh, location is not only on the topographical map, but also about the parcel and there's a boundary that has an address and someone is living on it. There's only one strange thing, eh? and uh, I think uh, now you have done your research that you will present tomorrow on uh, your country of uh, choice. But of course, there is a difference between the countries and the system of land administration about legal value. And that is caused a paradox by, by researchers that um, on one hand, eh, we have a an, an, an very reliable uh, set of data. And of course, uh, when we 
talking about, uh, we are looking at the red store about uh, the natural persons, you and me, and the Basis-Rechtsstaatse personen, that the information that is in that system, uh, when someone, uh, when uh, my daughter was born, I have to go to the office of the municipality and then uh, with the information I had got from the doctor that my daughter was really born, they will make a deed where it's stated that she's born on that day uh, with that name with the mother and the father. So there the government is the source itself of the information. Um, when we look at the cadaster, the cadaster, so the information about uh, the rights and sexual uh, responsibilities and the persons, and also about the parcels itself, um, you can find it in the cadaster. That's the key register. But the information itself is not provided by the government, but that's taken from all the transactions that are made. And we will have a closer look later on how it works in the Netherlands. But as you remember, the Netherlands is not a title registration, so it is not uh, guaranteed. The information we keep in the cadaster, so in the key register, is not guaranteed by the government, but the information is based on a uh, registration of deeds. So the cadaster is nothing more, but also nothing less, than an uh, in the, uh, the reflection uh, from the information you get at the moment you investigate the registration of deeds. So all the private documents, because those deeds where someone transferred the land, eh, A transferred to B, this in fact is a private document that's registered in the registration of deeds. And you can also call that uh, the public registers, the collection of deeds. And that information is reflected in the cadaster. It is not a proof. When B is mentioned being the owner in the cadaster, it is not really a proof. I can only prove that by investigating deeds in the registration deeds. So there is a kind of tension when you say, now, okay, we have the cadaster as key register. So it's very uh, good information. But on the other hand, it is not a guarantee. This is true. And the same also for the property boundaries. We have no proof of the boundaries itself. We, of course, we have partial boundaries. We have a uh, cadastral map, and this technically is uh, quite, uh, quite good, I think. But there can still be some differences. And also the, the map itself, yeah, it is just an image of uh, the information that the surveyor made, yeah, so uh, the cadastral surface. But it is an image taken, so it is not really a proof. Uh, I cannot go to, uh, in, in the field and then uh, say, oh, okay, but this is the property boundary as I find it on the map. And that is proves the ownership boundary. No, that's not true. What we see, it is very reliable. And there's also a paper by Seifenberg and, 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 uh, and Plucher you have to study. But it's not a proof. So there is a bit of tension between the key register. And so the government is going to use that. The government wants it to have it up to date. While on the other hand, the origin of the information, now that is a uh, registration of deeds that is uh, not, uh, may not be complete. Uh, there may be mistakes in it uh, or it needs more uh, investigation. Okay, and now to uh, yeah to see how it works, I just want to uh, have a look at the Netherlands. But again, this is just an example, and now you are all looking in a specific uh, uh, country. I'm looking really forward to your uh, presentation tomorrow, and also in the final papers. Uh, yeah, we're talking a lot about the whole system. We're talking about um, uh, what the aims are, uh, we're talking about also about uh, yeah, the idea of uh, improving it, but uh, how does it really work? No, um, I'm just giving this example, uh, also because I'm uh, the most familiar about, uh, about this, 
but this is just to show how it really works um, in a certain context in a certain country the Netherlands um, when we talk about land transactions uh, it can be uh, two things um, the first thing we have to think about of course is transfer of land eh? A is the owner and he's going to sell a plot and with a plot I refer to a certain piece of land on a certain place you sell that to, to the buyer B. And the whole idea is, of course, uh, I'm selling it, or I'm making a contract that the aim is that B will become the owner. And of course, A will uh, get something in return, and uh, that's the price that B will pay to A. Uh, next to transfer of land itself, uh, you can also create a right. Uh, take that, 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 that lease. Uh, in the Netherlands, we talk about the Erfpacht. Um, that uh, means that A will uh, keep the ownership, but um, there will be B that uh, will be from the moment that the right is created, um, uh, has the right to use it. Uh, a lot of counties, uh, sorry, a lot of cities in the Netherlands, you see that uh, Amsterdam is a very good example. That everything uh, outside uh, every land in uh, Amsterdam, outside the city center, uh, so uh, within the, the boundaries of the, 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 the Grachten, the Grachtengordel, is uh, in fact owned by the municipality of Amsterdam. Uh, but the land is given uh, in use to, to people based on that lease, uh, the Erfpacht. So that means that. The municipality of Amsterdam uh, is still uh, the owner. Uh, that means that they can uh, put restrictions in the use. Yeah, so you cannot do everything with it, but the deed where you grant that lease uh, will determine that you can use it for, for uh, a house or for industry uh, or for a shop. And on the other hand, what you see in this. Uh, uh, it looks a bit like a taxation, that they ask a price for it. Uh, the price can be that you pay it at once, but uh, very often you see that uh, you have to pay uh, every year or so. It looks like a bit like taxation, but it's not quite the same. So that's uh, maybe the idea to, to grant a lease and not to sell the land. So you have uh, still some power about it. Um, but it's uh, an example of a creation of a right. So that right should be uh, created, with, uh, will be created on a certain moment. And what also is possible, uh, this especially in the ca case of a lease, that also the lessee, the Erfpacht are in touch, so the P who gets the use right, can transfer that use right again to someone else. So that means that A still is the owner, but that B, transfer the lease to C. Now those are uh, the, 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 the main uh, uh, types of land transactions. And how does it work? And now I return to the most basic uh, type, that is the transfer of the ownership of the land. And in fact, you can say there are four people involved. This will be A, seller, B, the buyer, and in the Netherlands, we have a legal expert that must be involved. So just making a contract between A and B is not enough to transfer the land. You have to go to a notary. And then the fourth person, that's more, say, an institute that is the register of the cadaster. So the, the, the National uh, Office of the Land Administration. And what you need in the Netherlands is that there should be a valid contract between A and B. So it can be a sale and it can also be a gift. I'm giving it away. But uh, go back to, to the most normal case, there will be a contract of sale. And what does that mean, that contract of sale? That is there a consent by both A and B, so by the seller and the buyer, that A wants to sell and transfer the ownership to B. And B wants to buy and to get that ownership. Um, here I forgot that uh, 
committed that uh, B, of course, wants needs to do something to A uh, to pay the money. I keep it very simple. The next step is, so we have a contract of sale. The next step is that A must transfer to B the ownership. So this is an, uh, another thing. You have first only the contract, so this consent. And the next is that we are actually going to transfer that ownership. And in the Dutch system, we need a deed of transfer. So the contract itself is not enough. Now you could say, yeah, of course, uh, very natural. Yeah, we need a deed of transfer. Wrong. When we go to France, funny thing is, funny from uh, the Dutch perspective, is that there is no deed of transfer needed. At the moment, A sells to B. Also, the ownership goes to B. Um, yeah, when I'm talking all the time about the land administration and uh, also mentioning Napoleon, that is an, uh, the man that made the foundation of the modern land administration, it sounds very strange. However, what the French do, that's a bit a legal trick, is that they say, okay, at the moment there is a contract of sale, then the, contra the, the ownership will go to B. Only unless it is registered, third parties can ignore that. So when you cannot find that contract uh, or the deed of transfer in the system uh, in the French cadaster, I can ignore it. I don't know anything as a third party. So I still consider A to be the owner. Now, this is the French system. The Dutch did it in a different way. They just say, no, contract is not enough. I need a deed of transfer. And for that Next, deed, the, the, yes. The, does that mean that they sent the contract A and B to the French cadaster as a way to make it available to others? Yeah, yes. indeed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Skipping the deed uh, phase. Uh, <clears throat> there is a deed, but um, uh, so, so the contract itself should be in writing. And uh, you also need notary. Um, but uh, so the notary is drafting that, that same contract and then you send it to the French cadaster. That's it. Okay, so, you could, so you can, can say that the Dutch and, and the French system look very much the same. However, the Dutch lawyers made it uh, a bit uh, not really complicated, but uh, more secure to say now we ignore that the ownership transferred by the contract itself. So they wanted to the extra, uh, the extra uh, uh, yeah. yeah, you could say in the Netherlands it's a bit double. You have a yeah. contract uh, between the parties A and B, and then you get another kind of agreement, the deed uh, by A, B, and the notary uh, N. Yeah, that's and correct. Yeah. It's also dangerous if, if it's not consistent, and then probably the deed is more. Uh, important than the contract yeah that's co that's correct that's correct yeah there can be mistakes indeed that that the contract of sale is a bit different than the, the deed of transfer that's correct yeah so, but for the land administration only the deed of transfer is is uh, uh, it's important but the contract in the netherlands is only between the two parties buyer and the seller yeah, that's correct but it's good, also a uh, nice question, uh, Peter, because it also illustrates that even within the same legal family, and uh, it looks uh, very uh, familiar and, and it, is, it has the same origin, there can be uh, huge differences in the way it works out. So uh, always when, uh, it's for our students, but also for ourselves. At the moment you're going to study in a certain system, uh, please take care that, that something that looks the same uh, will not be actually ex exactly the same. So also take care when you're going to borrow uh, examples from other countries uh, to, to improve your own system. Uh, remain critical, always. Always remain critical. But okay, now, now back to the Dutch system. Um, yeah, there is a need, uh, a deed of transfer, and uh, that's not a uh, piece of paper that, that A and B can can uh, make up. But uh, you need a notary. 
and it's, uh, without a notary, it is not valid. And uh, that's also uh, indicated by the fact that the, the deed is not only uh, signed by uh, the seller and the buyer, but should also be signed by the notary. And then we get the important next step, because uh, we only draft the, de the deed of transfer, but we keep it in the office, nothing will happen from a legal point of view. Um, the notary has to send it to uh, the, uh, the, the uh, register, to the office of the cadaster. And nowadays it's done uh, by uh, uh, electronic means, but in the past it was really sent by, by post or brought by someone to, to the office. But now in most cases it is done electronically and uh, also received in, in a lot of cases by, uh, by just by the computer and also Someone is checking, of course, but uh, our system is now very sophisticated because it is possible that the computer will do it, read the deed because it is in standardized form, and then the computer will uh, change the cadaster. So it registers and also changes as done by the computer. It's only a check. But uh, uh, in, in the original system, someone has to read it will then register the deed in the registration of deeds. Now, there's nothing more than a collection of deeds. So uh, another deed gets a number, is registered. And then, um, sorry, uh, here I've made a mistake because not the notary is uh, updating the cadaster. So I will, uh, uh, I will correct this. There's a mistake here in this, uh, in this slide. Of course, the register will update the cadaster. So when it is registered, um, B uh, will be mentioned being the owner. Also with a reference, so you can check it up when you investigate the cluster, there will be a reference made to that uh, deed. Uh, I had a question. Yeah. Uh, with regards to, uh, well, the previous slide, uh, with regards to the, the valuation, for example, um, yeah. Is the valuation when uh, they uh, sell it, is it based on the, uh, for example, if you sell a plot of land, is yeah. it based on the area that's written in the, the deed or based on the area of the cadastral? Which one will be used? Because the legal area, the legal yeah, borders yeah. might be different from the cadastral borders, and therefore also the area might be different as well as the value. Yeah, that, that's correct. There's also a weakness in the whole uh, Dutch system. It is not checked. Uh, as long uh, the, there's no, uh, at the moment you you uh, divide the parcel in two, then the cadastral surveyor will come or or before the transfer, and that means that uh, you create a new parcel boundary, and then uh, yeah you you transfer uh, a new parcel to the owner. That's one one way. Um, and the other is that after the transfer, um, the, the, the boundary will be uh, surveyed. And what they do is that they don't uh, check the, 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 uh, the area itself. Uh -huh. so the only thing they measure, survey, is a new boundary. But you would assume that, I mean, the, the area would be more important for the value, right? Uh, yeah. But... Yeah. Yeah, but there the, the, the can be mistakes. You, you are right. There can be a difference between the official area, the legal area, and the area that you can derive from the boundaries, as, as described by Hendrik. And yeah, officially, the legal area is the area which is being mentioned in, in the deeds. And uh, yeah, when it is discovered in a new survey that the difference is too big, then some kind of technical correction is made then also the legal area will be corrected. But yeah, uh, until that moment, uh, the legal area is the area that is used in the official documentation. And but also for the valuation, because I would assume it might make a difference uh, money-wise for the set uh, buyer. Yeah, valuation is a completely different process. Uh, one of the uh, next lectures also. Okay. <laughs> and then also every country has different rules, but in the Netherlands, uh, it is not per se directly done anymore on the area. In the times of uh, Napoleon, that was the case. 
but today it is done by a really a sophisticated model um, and really also looking more at what is there on the ground and, and the location of the property than the, the size only. So size is a uh, yeah uh, aspect and, and I would guess, but I don't know the exact models of these companies that do the valuation for municipalities, that they use the legal area as, yes. as input for the computation or the estimation of the value. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah it is good to, to realize indeed I was maybe putting too much emphasis on, on the historical backgrounds of, of uh, the Dutch cluster. But indeed, in the key registers, that the, 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 the valuation is another key register. And what, what you now, in your question is indeed, this, your question um, uh, very critically, indeed the connection between that key register for the valuation and, and the key register cadaster. And there can be the difference between the two. Of course, in the perfect system, those mistakes will uh, slowly be removed because we discover there is a difference. Because we don't have, an, uh, yeah, the, 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 the boundary surveying, and also the whole idea about about that uh, we expect uh, the, the common person uh, expects that the boundary made by the cadastral the surveyor is is the same as the property boundary, but that's still not true, and that's also one of the questions I think in in the Netherlands should we continue improve to a system where we have guarantees. That's an ongoing discussion. Sometimes you indeed what, what Peter mentioned, at the moment there is a big difference between the, the real uh, the real uh, uh, area and, and the, the area that is registered in the land administration or in the key registration uh, uh, of, the, of the valuation. Yeah, then we will take action. But if the differences are small, yeah, who cares? It's a bit the the the, uh, the, the again oversimplified, but this it works like that. Are these two, two databases connected? Because then there might, for example, if a surveyor would measure it, it would he would instantly check the deed and see if it's yeah. uh, the same. I mean, if 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 it was connected to each other. Yeah. The, the, no. Yeah. The, 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 um, I think at the moment they don't do that because that uh, key registration for the valuation is only for, for taxation. But for instance, when, when you say hey, there, there are those differences, um, at the moment they introduced that key registration for the buildings and key registration addresses. Indeed, the notaries found mistakes. So the address in, in the deed and the address in the, uh, in the cadaster key registration cadaster was different than the address in, in, uh, in the, the key registration addresses and buildings. And that's something they found out. Yeah, there were mistakes. And what they do is, is that they, that the cadaster is very, very, uh, like it's, uh, they, they really, uh, the Dutch cadaster, I think, is very cooperating about removing those things. Yeah? So, don't, so they don't say, okay, uh, yeah, we don't care because it is our registration and that there is a mistake now. That's something for the for the others. They don't want to solve it. But they found at that moment, indeed, there were, there were, there were differences. Not many, but there were differences. And that's for a notary is a problem because he has to use that information from the both key registers to make his deed. So that created some confusion. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it uh, illustrates that we have a very good system, I think. We should be very proud, but it's not perfect. <laughs> There's still space for improvement. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I will finish this off. Um, um, uh, oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I go to, to uh, that, that piece of, of A transfer to B. So we have the document that's a uh, deed of transfer. I will change those two slides, I think, because there's a bit uh, creating confusing now, I see. But what is important, and that's also the, 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 the role why the notary is involved in this, that before drafting the document, the deed of transfer, the notary will always check if the 
seller is indeed the owner. We call it a title check. Uh, so he's doing an investigation in deed of, uh, sorry, in the registration of deeds. However, the notary relies on the check before him. So he relies on the work of the notaries before him. So normally, unless there is something very strange, something very fishy, he is not going to do further checks of the chain of transactions before A got the ownership. So he trusts his predecessor. And the cadaster itself, at the moment the, the register is going to register, is not going to check the deed of the notary. It's only check if the formal required requirements are, are uh, correct. It is a deed by a notary. It is signed by the parties. Uh, the reference to the parcel is uh, correct. Those are the only thing. He's not going to check if the legal valid. So that's you see this kind of cooperation between the registrar and the Dutch notary. And after this registration, so uh, the, 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 yeah, again, I made a mistake. It's a bit strange. I'm uh, very consequent, but I'm going to check this. But it's not the notary who will update the cluster. That's wrong. And so I'm going to uh, correct it. Uh, so also be critical about the teacher. Um, uh, this register, of course, we will update key register cadaster and inform buyer, seller, and also the notary about that. And when notary gets uh, the message, he will pay the seller. So this is also uh, very important until that moment the money is kept by notary. Now, if we go back to do the four basic principles of uh, land administration we saw last week, then those four principles you see return in the whole system of a transfer and yeah? the booking of register principle. Yeah, there's of course the registration of the deed of transfer. Yeah? There should be a document and we can find it in the land administration. The consent principle is very clear because that's uh, the consent is in contract of sale and will be repeated in the, uh, the deed the notary uh, drafted. Uh, A wants to sell to B and B wants to accept the ownership and uh, the publicity is uh, also very clear and yeah? there is a deed that is registered in uh, the public register so it can be inspected by the public uh, at large now we can know it yeah, and the speciality uh, uh, principle yeah, the, the land is identified with a reference to a cadastral identifier and that's in the netherlands is the parcel numbers uh, one or more Okay, that was in a nutshell uh, land administration and a uh, small look at the Dutch system. Uh, are there any questions? I didn't really understand uh, when you explained that uh, there's a difference between the legal aspect and the, the parcel as it is in the cadaster and we have to make a technical correction so do you uh, uh, have to fix, fix both the deed again and the cadaster parcel or the deed doesn't change and remains as it is I, maybe i didn't understand <laughs> yeah what 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 is uh, what we have is of course a legacy of of uh, the whole system was developed in in uh, 180 years so there are improvements while there are also mistakes or uh, less reliable information about this cadastral boundaries, but also about the, 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 the surface area as recorded in the cadaster. And those mistakes or uh, less real, uh, reliable boundaries are still there because we only update the new boundaries. So at the moment, there was a mistake made in the past and then uh, Maybe tomorrow I will show you uh, at the end of, of our meeting an uh, example, because I lived in an, uh, uh, in the Hague uh, until four years ago. I had a uh, uh, parcel with, with uh, at least two, I even think there were three mistakes in, in my boundary. And uh, if there is no, no one is complaining about it, uh, then, then it will not be, uh, uh, um, repaired 
I don't know, uh, Peter, have you have you an example of when they yeah, checked? It's, it's, yeah, it's a very funny concept eh, that there can be these differences between, say, the legal area based on the old yeah, initial measurements, you know, split it and split it and split it. And what the area is when you yeah, calculate that based on the boundary eh, with uh, yeah, newer surveying techniques. And yeah, it, it, it is legacy. It is causing confusion. And uh, cluster can they say cluster map is an index only, and it is, is not really uh, having this direct value. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, the legal area is the leading area. Uh, and yeah, and when there is new measurement and the, the, the difference is say. Uh, too large, then a technical correction is made. And that means that it's not per se an, an additional deed, but the, the parties are involved. And that's uh, okay in the official, <laughs> and that can cause complaints, <laughs> especially if it's getting smaller. It was always that small uh, when you look at the real boundaries, but on paper, it was bigger, which is a very funny concept. People uh, yeah, uh, thought they had more property and then they get a letter, okay, your property is not, say, 200 square meters, but 180 square meters. And they think, oh, I lost, they took away 20 square meters. But actually, that did not happen. The boundaries yeah, were never changed. Only the old yeah, number was wrong due to yeah, very old measurements, as Hendrik said, uh, up to 180 years old. And uh, especially, and not in the city centers, but uh, away from the city center, um, no, more the rural areas, the measurements were less precise in the past. And, and, and there are also the bigger arrows. And, uh, yeah, well, uh, it, yeah, uh, I can show you to a, a map and one of the next times, uh, maybe tomorrow, showing these differences in, in the thematic map. Uh, the, but, yeah, it's a flaw of our, of our system. But uh, I have one, one more question. Does that affect the owner? Because I know that in Greece, like the square meters of your ownership are really important for your taxation. So even if it's one square meter, it's a big difference depending on the area. And so I would assume that you would correct it for that reason, but I don't know how it works. Uh, yeah, difficult to say. In the Netherlands, we have the market value in, in valuation and that is okay. What is the property worth when it is being sold? And they don't look exactly at the size. Uh, it, 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 that is the market value. But to approximate the market value, uh, say companies and also municipalities have made models to yeah, estimate uh, as good as possible the market value. And then they use sales, recent sales statistics. Uh, but they also use, say, uh, yeah, additional data, like the, the size of the area. So the, it is not as important as in the past. So there's not a one-to-one -one relationship between the size of your parcel and the value. Uh, it, there is a kind of indirect relationship. So therefore, I don't think the, the consequences are that big as it would be in Greece, where there is a direct relation. We have also in the Netherlands a bit strange, uh, very flexible system. For instance, I uh, purchased a piece of land for, for a new house that was transferred to me in, in 